I was sitting here looking at the uh, Working Smart uh, book by Michael LeBeau, and I just finished reading uh, chapter one. Chapter one is called uh, Workaholics, Un Workaholics Unanimous, not the uh, anonymous, but the unanimous. And there's a quote. It's from an old Anison TV commercial. And Anison was, or I haven't seen it in a long time, but Anison is like um, aspirin, I think, something like that. But anyway, the quote, <laughs> the quote says, I like my job and I'm good at it. But it sure grinds me down sometimes, and the last thing I need to take home is a headache. <laughs> so it's an Anison TV commercial. It's like, I like working here, but man, I don't want to take home a headache, so I'm going to take my Anison. <laughs> As if work, you know, gives you a headache. And that's what this chapter is kind of about, right? I'm going to read some of it for you, and but I'm I'm not going to read the whole chapter, but I but I am going to, you know, just kind of I'm going to read some, and then I'm going to get into, you know, some of the things that I pulled out of this chapter, and then in here in the back it it actually talks about uh, how we are pre-programmed to think certain ways about work. You know, all of our cultures, all of our different cultures around the planet, right? We all have, and even our religions, right? We all have different programming in our minds about work, how to go about our daily lives in our work. And, you know, so we're preconditioned to think about work in certain ways and also, um, Myths. We, we have created myths about work, right? So that, that's what chapter one is about. I'm going to read a little bit of it. Not a whole lot, but just a little bit for you. Um, I'm going to skip over a few things, and I'm going to go and... Right here it says, what does work mean to you? Do you think of it do you think of it as an activity that takes more from you than it gives to you? Do you think of the distinction between play and work as that between pleasure and pain? Do you live to work? Do you work to live? Regardless of your answers, one thing is certain. Work is here to stay. By work, I mean the human expenditure of time and energy, both physical and mental. To accomplish or, or to complete a task, of course. By work, I mean the human expenditure of time and energy, both physical and mental, to complete a task. This definition is a very broad one. When you, stop, when, when you stop to think about it, turn the page, here we go, okay. When you stop to think about it, it means that you spend the overwhelming majority of your waking hours at work. When you brush your teeth, plan a vacation, drive to work, or perform household or occupational chores, you are at work. Likewise, you may work at being a better doctor, lawyer, teacher, tennis player, lover, or cook. Work, like death and taxes, is all-encompassing and in, in inescapable reality of life. It is an all-encompassing and inescapable reality of life. That's what work is. Right? It says, now for the good news. Assembled in the forthcoming pages, 
talking about the book here, is a comprehensive set of simple but powerful ideas and techniques that will that will enable you to conquer your personal energy crisis. So anyway, it goes in and it talks about work, the way we think about work, some of the what do you what do you call it? Some of the myths about work that make you ineffective. Some of the truths about work that are inescapable. Uh, anyway, they say effectiveness is the key to it all. All too often, many of us confuse effectiveness with efficiency. Being effective is choosing the right goals from a set of alternatives and reaching them. Efficiency, on the other hand, assumes the goals as given and proper and proceeds to find the best means of achieving them. Efficiency is doing the job right, whereas effectiveness is doing the right job. In a nutshell, effectiveness means results. Both are valuable concepts, but in my mind, effectiveness is far more important. Time, your most valuable resource. What is your time worth? Okay, so time is like money in that it is measurable and you can't take it with you. Hmm. However, as a resource, time it has unique properties. We are forced to use time at a constant rate. The inventory is being depleted at an amount of 60 minutes per hour, 24 hours per day, 168 hours per week. Time is irreplaceable. We are all, ooh, where my light go? There it is. For some reason, I was thrown into the darkness. I'm talking about time. <laughs> okay, let me get back to the book. We are all given a finite amount of time. But the irony is that we never know how much we have until it's all gone. When your time is all gone is when you realize just how much you have or had. Few of us admit to having enough time, but all of us have all that there is. That is the paradox of time. Time is truly our most precious resource. Anyway, it goes into talking about um, coming to grips with our morality, mortality, not morality, but coming to grips with our mortality, meaning we only have so much time. We have a finite amount of time. How do we apply ourselves during that time? Do we squalor our time away and don't accomplish anything or or do we plan and think about things and come up with ways to be effective come up with ways to use our time wisely and to get things done As most of us do, we can fool ourselves and believe that our time is infinite, that there will always be tomorrow to fulfill those lifetime dreams and wishes. There are few of us who deal with our mortality in a more constructive way. In effect, these people say to themselves, I'm not going to be here forever, so I'd better make the most of every minute, hour, day, and year. 
They view life as a brief but wonderful experience to be enjoyed to the fullest. Hmm. So anyway, I've, I've got a few passages underlined here. I don't want to read the entire chapter because, you know, I've already got a 10 minute video here. But it says, in order to make the most of your future time and energy, it is important that you devote some of your present time and energy to planning. Talks about the investment theory of work. You must be willing to sacrifice some of your present time, energy, and short, short range satisfactions in order to work less and accomplish more later on. Fail to control your future and it will control you. Working smart requires an investment of thought, self-discipline, and change. And that's where the book goes into talking about the uh, myths of work. So I'm just going to do a quick synopsis of those myths. And he calls those programming errors, where our minds have been programmed erroneously, you know, by life, by our religions, by our social uh, organizations such as churches, uh, schools, things like that, right? And he calls them work tapes, right? Well, we don't use tapes much in our uh, daily lives anymore, but like recordings, whatever. Anyway, myth one. Uh, well, he calls them tape tapes. I'm going to call them myths. The more you sweat, the more you get. But he talks about working hard. Working hard, you know. So the more you work, the more you work, the more you get. That is a fallacy. It really is a fallacy. <sighs> when many of us are asked the key to our success, the first thing we attribute it is to hard work. Yep. Evidently, hmm. A lot of times when they ask somebody about how they got their success, they say, oh, it's through hard work, right? But a lot of times it's not their hard work. It's on the back of other people. It's other people's hard work that get that person to that level of success. Right? So you got to think about things like that. Uh, myth number two is activity means productivity. Well, the activity trap is beaten by setting goals and keeping them in focus, right? Activity, many of us habitually confuse activity with results. Often organizations find it hard to measure an employee's effectiveness, right? Consequently, activity replaces re results as the yardstick of performance. The busiest person is deemed the best worker and is rewarded for busy behavior rather than results. So that's activity is a fallacy. You know, like somebody could grab a broom and just sweep, 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 sweep their entire life away, right? Because their employers don't know how to measure, to, you know, what they're doing. They, they look at them and think, wow, this person's very busy. He must be the best worker we have. Because they always see that person pushing a broom, sweeping the floor. But anyway, activity is not. Myth number three is efficiency. You can be efficient in all kinds of things, 
but is it effective? Right? The confusion that arises between efficiency and effectiveness was discussed earlier. Yep. So it is not enough to be busy. The question is, what are we busy about? The activity trap is beaten by setting goals and keeping them in focus. So you set your goals, you meet your goals, keep your goals in focus and get there. That's much better than activity. Burning the big not burning the midnight oil is a is a big fallacy. A lot of people think that you know they can be, become more productive by doing that, but we got to get away to recharge our batteries, right? If you're burning the midnight oil, you're not recharging your batteries. Failure failure to do this hampers our enthusiasm and our creative and our creativity. Work expands to fill the time available, right? So if you allocate your midnight hours to doing work, right? In addition to your regular daytime hours, right? That means the work will expand to fill those hours. But do you actually get anything accomplished? If your work expands to fill those hours, kind of like a balloon, you know. Think of the air that you put in a balloon as work. The more work you put in there, the more it expands. Or think of it like this. You put a little bit of air in the balloon, but on the outside of the balloon, you create a vacuum. That vacuum is the hours that you allocate. Right, because you have a vacuum outside of the skin of the balloon, the air inside expands. It's the same amount of air. It just expands to fill as far as it can the allocated vacuumous area. The same way with work. The more time you give yourself, the more that little bit of work expands to fill that time. Myth number five, the best way to get the job done is to do it yourself. Well, I can, I, uh, this is becoming a long, long video here, so I'm going to stop here. Well, actually, I'm just going to go through and talk about some myths. Myth number six, the easy way is the best way. Uh, but anyway, the path of least, of least resistance is for losers. So the easy way is not always the best way. Myth number seven. Hard work is virtuous. Ah. Myth number eight, work is not fun. The extension of, or the exertion of mental and physical energy is a totally natural thing. So work can be fun, right? It, it all depends on how you think about it. The exertion, you exert mental and physical energy. It's a natural thing. It's a natural part of life. Myth number nine, there's only one best way. <laughs> oh, there, are, there are many best ways. Right. A good rule of thumb is that there are always at least two good ways to do anything. Myth number 10, more discipline means less freedom. A lot of people don't like discipline. Hmm. What can I say about that? We conclude that disciplining ourselves is done at the expense of limiting our freedom. But anyway, they talk about discipline and freedom here, and they, they talk about the different the balances between discipline and freedom. It says there, there can be high freedom coupled with great amount of discipline. This occurs when a person imposes self-discipline. He set his own goals, formulates a strategy, and imposes order on himself. He programs himself to satisfy his own needs. He learns to make the most of his time and energy. And as a result, he works less 
and accomplishes more. Myth 11, justice for all. I'm just going to read some of the underlying stuff. Life is not fair and never will be. Life owes us nothing. The justice myth is overcome by acknowledging the reality that justice simply doesn't exist. Justice, like beauty, is in the eye of the beholder. I may have to come back around and talk about that one. Myth number 12, we work best under pressure. But that's not true. When you work under pressure, it's because you procrastinated and you put it off until the last moment. And then all of a sudden you jump in there and you try to get it all done at one time, right? At the last possible moment. That is when you make all the mistakes you can, right? Nothing is as easy as it looks. Everything takes longer than you expect. And if anything can go wrong, it will. At the worst possible moment. But anyway, this guy talks about those myths and how you need to turn off the, the thoughts of those myths in your brain and think about work in a better way in a more productive, effective way. So I'm gonna leave it off right there. That was chapter one. And uh, I don't know, I, I think I could have turned this into a, just one chapter into a whole hour of jibber jabber here on, on this video, but I'm gonna end it right here. I already got 22 minutes in. Talk to you later, enjoy your life, work effective, Become an effective, productive, goal-setting person in your daily lives, in your work life, in your home life, in your personal life. And you'll realize that you're getting things done and you feel good about it. Talk to you later.